How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca. I'm a final year medical student studying in Canada and in today's video we have some major major medical school and life updates for you guys. So this video is not going to be about me trying to talk your head off. We're going to keep it short and sweet. We're talking about the final year of medical school. I am graduating in May. And in today's video, we're talking about my applications to residency that I just heard back from. We're talking about my interviews for residency programs that are coming up in the next few weeks. And then finally, we're talking about how my preparation for the board exams has been going. That is the American USMLE step one, which I am writing in just over a month on April 1st, and then the Canadian uh, MCC test that I'm going to be writing in May, May 15th. Now, I will say that one of the big reasons why I'm making today's video is to give you guys a little bit of insight into how to better plan your schedule when you do get to this point right here. I feel like I definitely did things incorrectly. I'm very stressed out right now. I did this all to myself. Uh, we're gonna get through it, don't get me wrong, but I'm trying to maybe give you some better insight on how to better lay out your schedule in your final year. So first things first, we'll talk about the good news. That is medical residency interviews. As you guys know, in the final year of medical school, you spend days, hours, months, in some cases, prepping your application. You're trying to put your entire life down on only a few sheets of digital paper for you to package together and send off to all of your different residency schools that, that you're choosing from. It's a very interesting time because wherever you match for residency is binding. No matter where you end up in terms of where you go for for residency, it's very difficult to change once you've been accepted into a program. And that's why everyone takes so long to apply to residency because everyone on the one hand is trying to make themselves look as competitive as possible for their first choice program, but at the same time applying to some second, third and fourth choice programs. That way you're not stuck not matching at the end of the day. Now here's where I was a little bit risky with my applications. Definitely the average for family medicine applicants. And I'm only applying to family medicine as I've told you guys in the past. The average across the country is 25 different programs that people will apply to. And definitely I knew students that applied to 35, 50, and even more than that programs for this particular residency application. Um, I didn't do that, not even close. I was definitely way under um, the 50 applications across the country. And I was, I was under the average by a good margin in terms of how many schools I applied to. And the reason being is because wherever you match for residency, you're gonna end up going there. And I thought that I had tried my best throughout medical school to make myself as competitive of an applicant as I possibly could. And then when it came time to applying for, for residency, I read through every single residency program, went over all the different aspects of their program, and then hand selected only a few programs that I wanted to apply for. I only applied to programs that I knew that I would love to go there no matter what. All of the programs that I applied for, they're all amazing top tier programs that in, in my opinion. And after the last few weeks of me getting very little sleep, wondering if I was gonna get any interviews at all and having to worry about if I, you know, I, I don't have any backups at this point. Uh, thankfully, I could say that I got interviews at every single program that I was, that I applied for. And I'm super stoked about it. It is such a big weight to have lifted off my shoulders, knowing that I am good to go for in the interview cycle coming up in the next few weeks. And that's actually gonna take me into the second point that I want to talk about now and that is preparing for medical residency interviews and what that process has been like truthfully i am like i feel like i was thrown right back into me being an undergrad trying to apply to get into medical school the preparation process at least for me in terms of getting ready for a residency interview feels very very similar what it entails is me going through my entire application forward and backwards and knowing exactly what i have listed on that application why i did it what i learned from all strategies that i've shared with students throughout the years as to how to prepare for a medical school interview the process feels very similar at least for me now here's the problem and, and this is why i said before that I, I definitely didn't do this right in hindsight the turnaround time from when you get your interview offer to the actual interviews is about a week in some cases i just heard back on friday my first interview is coming up in just a few days and the amount of preparation that i have to put into getting ready for those interviews is, is pretty extensive on top of that, all the time that I had to put into actually making my applications to send off, and then we're still working full-time in clinic. Um, and then I'm studying for the board exams, and I don't know if you guys can tell, but I, I'm exhausted right now. This is, uh, this is one of the most tired parts of, of medical school for me so far. There is so much that I need to do. And in hindsight, I feel like this time when you're getting ready for interviews and you're applying and stuff like that, you really don't want anything else going on right now. I, I told myself that I was gonna do the step one of the USMLE. I am gonna do the step one of the USMLE, but here we are now with all this other stuff that I'm also doing at the same time, which means that uh, you, you gotta give up sleep. That's, that's the only time that I've been able to find uh, to fit everything in. Um, 
So there's that. There's only so many hours in a day, unfortunately, and I find that I'm waking up really early in the mornings. I go to the gym, I work all day in clinic or in hospital, wherever I'm at, I'll come home, and then I'll study for like four or five hours at nighttime, Anki cards, practice banks, all of that stuff. And, and sometime in that four to five hours now is going to be spent uh, studying or getting ready for interviews. They're, they're all gonna be online. And my biggest fear is that because of my experience making videos on YouTube, I don't want that to bleed over into my, my interviews or my demeanor when I interview. Like the worst thing that I could do is go to an interview with one of my schools and be like, you know, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another interview, because uh, that would suck. So now finally then, that is going to take me to the last thing to talk about and that are the board exams. Believe it or not, I feel a lot better. Well, I mean, of course I believe it too. I feel a lot better going into the Canadian board exam than the American USMLE. And that's because in studying for the exam, there was so much stuff on that exam that's tested on that exam that I've never even seen. Like for example, there are a few questions and a few passages I had to review on the American healthcare system and the different insurance plan. I didn't really know any of that stuff. I didn't know a lot about parasitology or anything to do really with the different types of bacteria and the different treatments for all of the different bacteria. Cause that's not, microbiology is not something that we spend a lot of time on in my medical school, for example. Where we stand right now is that I have been going through all of the different practice banks and I'm almost done everything. I feel semi-confident at this point. Um, this right here is my handwritten notes that I have. Um, basically every novel idea that I hadn't learned before studying this exam that I do need to know for the exam. And now all I need to do in theory is take my handwritten notes and get them to just stick just, just a little bit better to um, my knowledge, be able to recall that when I needed to answer these questions. I wanted to write this exam first and foremost because I really do feel like it's going to make me a better doctor in the long run. And I know so much more now studying for this exam than I did before. I, I think that it helped me a lot, that is for sure. One of the things that I like to do though, um, when it comes to setting challenges for myself and goals to do, is hold myself accountable that I actually complete these goals. And to that extent, one of the things that I did and knowing that I had to study for this exam during one of the roughest periods in medical school is tell you guys all about the fact that I was going to be writing this exam. And that really lit a fire under me knowing that there are in the very least hundreds of people that are now going to see whether or not I pass or fail this test, which is so, motivating on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's gotten to the point where I feel like right about now, I, I frequently wake up maybe about one to two times per week with just nightmares of, of failing this exam or showing up and not knowing what I, what I need to um, and not passing the test. And speaking now to a few Canadian students that have written the test in the past and failed, I feel like the process is a little bit different for me, knowing that if I fail, I'm failing publicly. I uh, have hundreds of people that are going to know that I failed this exam. So where do we take that moving forward now? Today is Sunday, it's February 20th, which means that tomorrow is Monday. It's the start of a new week. The exam is in less than a month and a half. My interviews are coming up. I am super, super busy. And I feel like we are just about to kick it into a whole other level, the whole other gear. That's the only thing that I have really to, to go to. I refuse to fail this exam. I refuse to not do amazing at my interviews. And um, it's a really interesting feeling that I have right now in terms of being really, really excited and also being really, really stressed out. I feel like for myself anyways, this is probably what pushes me to be the best version of myself that I could be, trying to find the right amount of pressure that you get to apply to yourself. And I'm so thankful that I have you guys to allow me to do that for myself and keep pushing me and things like that. And I'm happy to keep providing updates. I'm going to have vlogs coming out about my different interviews that I have with all of my different schools. And then match day on April 12th, we will go ahead and reveal that final decision to you as well. And sure, we'll, we'll vlog the, the uh, USMLE as well as the Canadian exams too. So definitely a whole bunch of videos that I have to make in the next few weeks. There's going to be another one coming out tomorrow as well that I've already filmed. And now I just need to edit. But guys, thank you so much for stopping out for today's video. Uh, I hope everything's going well on your end. If you have any questions at all, you want to tell me about anything, ask about anything, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. And we'll see you all on the next one. Everyone take care.